The next speaker, he is a dear friend to us. He has been our chief judge of the Innovex Pitch Contest for three years, and he is a respected and experienced venture capital uh, supporter, Angel from Silicon Valley. And today, he's going to bring us his perspective from Silicon Valley, from America. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Anis Uzman, CEO and general partner of Phoenix Venture Capital. Hello, Anis. So happy to see you again. Hello, everyone. How are you? How many of you are from, um, you have a startup? Raise your hand. How many of you? Only very few of you. How many are related to a startup? All right. All right. So today, um, I'm going to talk about um, how to build a great startup. Okay. So I am from Silicon Valley. Um, so I run a fund called Phenox Venture Capital. And we are based in Silicon Valley. We have invested in more than 120 companies around the world. Um, we invest in all technology areas. Um, we also actually happen to run a very big initiative worldwide called Startup World Cup that is run in 30 different countries, including in Taiwan, and we actually run that event. Um, so we give away a million dollars in prizes. So if you are the next you know, challenger, please challenge that event as well. It will come to Taiwan sometime this year, late this year as well. So I will talk to you how to build a startup and how to use some of the top techniques as you are building a startup. So, sorry. Yes. So I think the first thing that I want to talk about is as you are building any company, the most critical thing which will make you to live or die is money. If you do not have capital, you are not going to convert your dream into reality. So it is very important that when you raise money for your new business or idea, you also do it in a very systematic way. All right? So I have shown you a picture. I met many startups. They told me that, oh, I want to raise a million dollars from you at Series A round. And I asked them, okay, how much you raised last round? And they say, like, we raised $200,000. And how much equity have given away? And they tell me that they have given away 50% of the company in the seed round. That's a very bad thing for the startup. It's a bad recipe. So, for example, if I were you and I have built a company, I will not give away more than 20% of the stock at the seed round. Whatever money you raise, I don't care, but don't give away more than 20%. Because the minute you do that, you are going to break the cycle next round and next round and next round. And what will happen when you are at Series B and you need like $20 million to take your business from say 1 million to 100 million, you have no share left for you. So that's a recipe of death. So you're going to die. So it is very important that you do your research and find out how much you need to raise at every single round as you are growing your startup. And you might think that, oh, I know that story, but I meet a lot of people. I actually look at about 10,000 deals a year, and I will say that half of them have this problem. So I wanted to bring it up first. The second thing is diversify your investors. I meet a lot of people that, oh, I want to get money from you. And I ask them, hey, who did you get money from last time? And they say, like, oh, I got money from some angels. That does not give me much confidence, to be honest with you. I want to hear that, oh, I got money from this company. I got money from this angel. I also got money from the other VC. Because that gives people confidence. So it is extremely important that you actually do a good mix as you are raising your money. So, when you are raising your money, you want to diversify a little bit. If you have the option, I will say that take some money from the angels, who are the individual investors, but also take money from some VCs. 
If some VC comes out and tells you that you need a million dollars, I will give you all. My advice would be don't take from one VC. You split the check and take it from four different persons. Because as you grow your business, you will need help from many, many people. And if you have got money from one person, that person has only two hands. It has limitation. So you want to take it from a lot of people. Okay? The next techniques. Follow the fundraising latest techniques. You know, you do not need to go the traditional way. There is a lot of ways you can be anywhere in the world and still raise a lot of capital to convert your dream into reality. You know, we hear some things called ICO, right? That is one way of raising money. Uh, you have heard about crowdfunding. There is a lot of platforms nowadays that actually can help you with crowdfunding. You can get money from large corporations and obviously you can get money from VCs like myself. But as you grow the portfolio, make sure that you also are open to new ideas. I mean, ICO is not a bad idea if you can figure out how to raise the money. So let's look at this person. Uh, this person, his name is Pavel Durov. He is the CEO of a company called Telegram. How many of you know Telegram? This is one of the companies who have done a great job with ICO. They are from Russia, but anybody in the world, in the investment community, know about them because they raise the highest amount of money through the latest ICO technique. So this is something to actually, we can take it as an example and actually grow as we raise money for our company. So the next thing that I hear, especially when I come to Taiwan, whenever I talk to someone, they tell me that, oh, I cannot talk about this because my file is, patent file is pending. So my advice to you would be that spend less time on patent filing. Spend more time in building the company. If you have an idea and if you can execute the idea today, it is better that you do not wait for tomorrow. Because time is money. And if you do not do things fast, faster than anybody else, you can never become a winner. So please do not focus that much on patent filing. Please spend more time in how fast I can convert that patent idea into a real product or technology. Right? So the next thing I will talk about is short pitch. Most of you are very bad about this thing, this thing. That whenever I talk to someone, you know, there is this thing called elevator pitch. Everybody tells you when you join a startup that you need to know how to do your elevator pitch. That tells you that you need to be able to present your idea and appeal to an investor within less than 30 seconds. You know, the elevator, you get in and you get out. Within that short period of time, you need to be able to explain your idea to someone who you want to impress. It is a very big quality, and most of the entrepreneurs are very bad about it. So you need to really take this as a motivation and make sure that you do a good job with explaining what you want. I will tell you, and maybe you will see today, there will be a lot of people pitching. At the end of the presentation, I always ask them, so what do you do? And they presented for 10 minutes. And you will see that today. It, it is coming, okay? So we'll actually experience that. At the end of the presentation, we have no idea, because you have so many ideas that you want to explain to the whole world that your, all of your ideas are billion-dollar ideas. But it has zero result, because nobody gets it. So it is very important that you practice for a short pitch. The next thing is focus on customer needs. So I'll tell you that I started Phenox Venture Capital. And starting a startup of venture capital is a very rare thing. It's hardly anybody has done it. So when I started venture capital, and it was a startup, I started only 
you know, with zero dollars. And I raised billions of dollars. And my, my goal was to listen to the people who were my customers. And I ended up building one of the most innovative VCs in the world where all of my limited partners are large corporations. I have 26 large corporations, including some of the very big companies from Taiwan who have given me millions of dollars to invest in innovative startups. Why I did that? Because I listened to the people. Even this morning, I was meeting a lot of CEOs in Taiwan, and they, I learned so much from them, and I think that my company is going to become a better company tomorrow because I listened. So you need to be open to that. A lot of people, when they start a company, they are so stubborn about the idea that I know this is going to be successful. I know this is a billion dollar idea. You know, every day I receive close to 300 emails from people who want money from me and everybody says this is a billion dollar idea. So there is so much billion dollar in this world, right? It's amazing. So it's, everybody thinks that way, but you need to really make it happen by proving it. So I'm going to show you an example. So I invested in a company in Japan. Um, it's a company in Hokkaido. And I invested um, you know, in the seed round. And I was trying to grow them. And I was telling them that you know, if this idea is not working, maybe you should try something else. And the CEO, I'm not going to mention her name, she was very stubborn. She won't listen. And I was telling that this is not working. It goes six months, nine months. The number of users are not growing. So this means it is not working. But she kept trying and trying and trying. And one day she mailed me and told me, I have to close, shut down the business. This is a bad example. But I invested and I lost the money. It's painful. But this is an example how she should have changed the company to a different direction when you know, she had time. So the next thing is build effective partnership is very, very important. So as you are growing the company, it is extremely important that you build relationship with large corporations, mid-sized corporations. Especially if you are in Taiwan, you have a lot of options to build partnerships because there is a lot of small and mid-sized companies in this country. So you have to build a partnership. I will give you a good example. So, I invested in this company uh, from MIT. Uh, this company, what they do, they have artificial intelligence to understand human feeling. This is actually one of the best companies in the feeling recognition artificial intelligence area. I invested six million dollars in this company. So you can understand I'm very serious. So I also am a board director of this company. So when I met them, my first goal was that how I can help you. And when they took money from me, they told me that I can only take money from you if you give me more than money. You can give me some other things other than the capital. So what I offered to them, I said that most of my investors are large corporations. How about I introduce you to some of them? And they said, that's a good idea. What I did, I introduced them to a company in Japan called CAC Holdings. Uh, you can see it here. CAC, it's a public company. They're a system integrator. They liked this company so much that you see these two pages. This is a pamphlet. So they decided that they will become the sole distributor of this startup technology Affectiva in Japan. And they have been using this product, the feeling recognition of different things in many different projects, having consecutive revenue for them. So this is a good example how an investor also can help you have and build partnership with corporations and other parties who can help you. I'm going to talk about the speed. Speed is the key to success. This is very important. As I told you, that don't spend much time thinking that my idea is going to get stolen before you launch it, because that is what is important. Speed is not only important 
as you are building the company, speed is also important when you are selling the company. An example. So I invested in this company called MindMeld. Um, it is also from MIT. So don't take me, I have no bias against MIT, but most of my investments are in MIT for some reason. So I invested in this company. They do a very generic thing, which is called voice recognition. So it, the machine can listen to you. You know Siri and many other devices nowadays. They listen to you and they can respond. So MindMelt was a voice recognition company. Do you know how many voice recognition company in the world today? Maybe thousands. <laughs> because everybody who understands how to program artificial intelligence, they create this company. So when I invested, there was nobody. So I was the king. I was thinking that I'm going to sell this company for a billion dollars to someone. And I gave them a lot of money also. And when after one or two years, I found there are so many companies doing the same thing. So what I did, I told them, let's find out a buyer as soon as possible before it is too late. We found the buyer. I actually asked them to come to a startup World Cup and do a presentation on the stage just as a guest speaker. They did it. Guess what? After the World Cup finished, they got a call from Cisco. They sold the company for $125 million. It's still painful. My dream was billion dollars. We sold it for 125, but it still made my day. But what happened is the CEO of this company made a good decision because the market was too competitive and was getting saturated, right? So speed is the key. So you need to know when to get your, let your baby go. The next things, build the company based on the current market needs. What the market needs? You know, so I'm going to show you an example soon. So if you look at your cell phone, when it is, say, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, what, what is the thing that you get most worried about? Is your battery, right? That how much charge left? So I always dream of a day when it is inside my pocket, like now I have some, some Chinese, you know, China Telecom is giving me signal, in the future, you pay $10 and your phone will be charging in your pocket because some electric company will be sending you electric waves and your phone will be charging. I always dreamed that and that is a need. Do you agree it's a need to charge your phone? I found the company. So I actually found some entrepreneurs who actually was doing it. They are from Washington and I'm going to show you that company. This company can charge your cell phone in less than six hours. It's amazing. And I am an investor into the company. From Washington, let's enjoy a video. Imagine a world where you never have to think about charging your devices. No more plugging chargers into a wall socket. No more replacing batteries. This is the true meaning of wireless power. Imagine a day when your phone will start charging as soon as you step into your home. Your TV remotes video game controllers, tablets, smart watches, fitness bands, even your smoke detectors will continuously work without running out of power. Imagine walking into your favorite coffee shop, an airport, your office, even a train, and your phone starts charging. With Coda technology by Osseo, it's here. Your phone and other devices will automatically charge in your hand, pocket, purse, on your coffee table, wherever. So what is Coda? Coda is effortless. A Coda charger can power a household or office environment similar to the way Wi-Fi works. No plugs, no cables, no hassles. Coda is safe. It uses the same frequency as Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, powering devices continuously while avoiding you and all other obstructing objects. Coda is intuitive. It automatically charges all devices to full capacity and it decides what needs more power when. Coda is clean. It only delivers power when something needs power, unlike conventional wall chargers that are constantly drawing current. Coda is small. Its receiver is a microchip that can be embedded into virtually any device, even standard size batteries. Just think, a battery that never runs out. Coda is enabling. It's rewriting the rule book on how we power devices, freeing innovators to take technology to the next level. 
With the growing number of electronic connected devices demanding power to operate, we have truly become a power-hungry society. It's time to rethink the way we utilize power and protect our environment. With Coda by Osseo, the possibilities are truly endless. So in Taiwan, <clears throat> everybody is good in very much in hardware, right? So I want you to build a company that can be like this. Now you see these companies are like, yeah, I should have thought about it before, but it's gone, right? So you should build a company that makes you billion dollars. Actually, this company can make trillion dollars, trust me. Because if you have this company, tell me who wants to use Wi-Fi cell phone charging. Raise your hand if you want to use it. All of you. So everybody's going to use it. And hey, guess what? Who is the successful person here? Me, because I invested in this company. I'm just kidding with you. That's an American joke. <laughs> All right. So um, going to the next. My screen is out. OK. So follow the trend. This is very important. That find out what is hot. And you need to build a company that is hot. So let me show you a hot area, because I think Taiwan is very good at hardware. So a hot area where we are seeing a lot of focus. So what is next? I think people say that. So if you ask me what is next, next is quantum computing. You know, the way you're using your cell phone today, the so much data that is being collected, and IoT, Internet of Things, is killing it. Plus, as you are using any device, there is a technology called edge computing. It is computing on your device. It is making things very complicated. The supercomputers cannot keep up with the way you are taking pictures every day. You see how many pictures you have in your cell phone? There are thousands of them. And if you collect all of us, the supercomputers are getting sick and tired. They need Red Bull. You know what is Red Bull? So they need Red Bulls. And the only way that the technology can keep up with the necessity of the computing power is a technology called com quantum computing. Actually, you'll be surprised that quantum computers are 1,000 times faster than supercomputers. And you can look into the technology. For some of the top uh, companies, IBM, Google, Microsoft, Alibaba, these companies have spent a lot of time and energy not only to build quantum computing hardware, but also softwares. So I came to know this maybe a little earlier than all of you. So you see a company called Rigatti. It is one of the biggest quantum computing hardware company in the world today. And I am the first investor in this company. So they, they came out of IBM, and they built this company because these kids, they realized that the computing power that the supercomputers and mainframes and everybody else can provide today cannot keep up with the future needs. If you build a company tomorrow in, which is related to quantum computing, I think you have a very big shot in life. Trust me, you have a shot. If you build a company this year or next year which solves a quantum computing problem, you have a bigger shot than you think you do. That's my guess, and I think it's going to be successful, trust me. So Rigetti is a good company. It started by Chad Rigetti, my good friend, and you know, I invested in this company two years ago. It was a baby at that time. They're one of the biggest companies in Silicon Valley today when it comes to quantum computing. So let's look at the next. Effective marketing is very important. Marketing is very important. Today you will see a lot of startups are coming. Actually, this is also one type of marketing because they get to know you and you get to know them. So, Effective marketing, I'll give you one example. So this is a startup called Ali Jasa. It is from Indonesia, so I invested in this company. And what they did is that these guys were so good at presentation, they ended up presenting in many, many competitions, and everywhere they were champions, champions, champions. This continued forever. You saw how much money they received. They're all over the place. They're all over the TV, all over things. And you know, 
they do simple things they just take your laundry clothes they clean it and give it back to you it's no technology no quantum computing it's regular e-commerce but they used participating in competitions like this to boost up their marketing everybody knows them in indonesia today and I'm going to show you one of the video clip yeah, where they are actually news presenting in the TV. Jaya, actually, it is CNN. Jaya Ning Tias bersama Dimas Wijaya, pemenang dari Startup Pedia ASEAN 2016, sekaligus pendiri dari Ahli Jas. Halo, terima kasih rekan-rekan sudah kasih. datang di CNN Indonesia, 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 Indonesia Tech News. Kita akan bicara mengenai Anda berhasil memenangkan salah satu apa ya kompetisi startup yang terbesar mungkin di Asia Tenggara yaitu Startup di Asia bisa ditunjukkan dulu nih sebenarnya Boleh. ini 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 piagamnya yang setelah Anda berdua bisa menang bisa ya. ceritain nggak gimana alijasa.com akhirnya bisa memenangkan suatu penghargaan yang prestisius seperti so this was CNN Asia. Indonesia and um, and they actually got champion here so I actually did the competition I wanted to give away fifty thousand dollar to one of the competitions and they became the champion. The minute they became champion, they got called by seven, eight TV stations, you know, because they won $50,000. $50,000 can be a lot of money in, in Indonesia. It's like it's 50 million rupee or something like that. Um, but anyway, so they actually used a good technique, which was using the pitch contest competitions and the prize money to go to the next level. So I'm going to the next level. So that's all I had today. I think um, my presentation was a little bit informative for you. So become my friend, become my LinkedIn friend, become my Facebook friend. As I said, we also do a competition where you can win a million dollars in prize. That is called the Startup World Cup. It's the startupworldcup.io. Participate. If you're from any country, it happens in 30 different countries. If you the winner, you can win a million dollars. But that is not important. If you get to go to the grand finale in Silicon Valley, if you get on the stage, your fate is decided for success. That's what it is. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time, and I'll see you again. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Anis.